My name is Jerry Kovis, and I live in 1311 East Side Street, Northeast. And one of the things that I wanted to bring up is I commute by bicycle. I basically, that's, you know, what I use. And in that neighborhood, I feel like the traffic is way too fast. We have an elementary school there. We have the San Francisco Street Bakery there. And I don't know if it's just based on my perspective of being on a bicycle, where it seems like they might be going too fast, but uh, I've approached a couple of uh, police officers about it. I've approached a couple of, I don't know what they are, but they're the volunteer police people that go out. And <clears throat> I will say that I got pulled over one night because they were the police officers were creeping over there. We've had a lot of burglaries with cars. So it's really good to see that they were out. There was a presence there. And I brought it up to them as, as far as like the, the traffic. I just think it's people are going too fast, you know, for it being a residential and there being an elementary school over there. Uh, the only other thing I was going to say is, I don't know what's going to happen with the busking thing, but I, uh, I think it should be a little easier for people to be able to have the ability to busk. It seems like there's almost a purposely, like, I don't know, there's a, like a hidden agenda behind having the businesses apply for a permit instead of having an individual apply for a permit. Maybe like if the individual gets permission from the business that they want to do that in front of, they can do it themselves because that also would give them a little more like ownership over what they're doing and a little more responsibility as well. And then if they don't get the permit, then it's on them and it's not on the business or the city for not having adequate means of getting it. So that's it. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Well, we're going to address you guys more than these people. I really have nothing to say to them. Um, uh, this is, you know, this is good. It's a good turnout today and stuff, but this is a stepping stone, you know, and we need Basically, we need to start creating more and more and more of this and actually taking back spaces here because if we don't do things like this, they're going to go through with their own, you know, crazy agendas. But that's all I really wanted to say, I suppose. And you're Jacob. So did Joseph A. return? Yes, he did. Okay, Joseph, if you can come up and then followed by Bob. Hello. Um... Uh, I'm not really sure what exactly you want me to say, but, um, story. oh, my story, oh. well, I'm a busker just like anyone else, I've, um, I've been playing around the country, playing everywhere I've been, and, uh, it's pretty much been my life, it's literally my livelihood, I'm solely and wholly an artist, and this is, this is my right, that I want to have the right to express myself and express my art, and I can't afford to be on a radio, I can't afford to like produce my own music yet, but I mean this is like really my heart and soul, and like to take that away from me, to take that right away from me would be like killing me or cutting off my hands, you know, this is like really my heart and soul music, and um, I just, I just hope that we can find a way to coexist with, with your, with your rules, and maybe not have so much trouble, and not have be so persecuted every time I want to play music, whenever I want to express myself. And I mean, if anything, it's going to enrich in Olympia for us to be able to play on the streets. Not to, it's not going to make it any less or more than anything else. It's just going to make it more beautiful, more creation, more creative, more connecting. It's connecting us. It's, it's bringing us together. It's building more culture. Um, I don't know what to say. I mean, like, I know sometimes that business is kind of slow sometimes in front of a bar, and if I go out there and play, more people are more, like, called in that direction, and sometimes they don't even talk to me or even tip me, but they'll go inside the bar. I mean, like, I don't see how my music could really affect the businesses going on around here. And, uh, yeah. Uh, that's about it. Great. Feel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Drew Hendricks, I know you're here. And when Drew's finished, we'll see if Felix A. has arrived. Hello. Um, I'm Drew Hendricks, 816 Adams Street, Olympia, Washington. Um, it's been a little while since I've come and spoken to you guys. 
Um, I was cop watching today and noticed that there wasn't a whole lot of police response to the events that were going on until about a half an hour before people left, state patrol came and tried to shut off the power. Um, that didn't work out. We worked something out and, you know, we pretty much took the streets and marched around downtown without very much interference. When we got here, however, four, no, three of your officers decided that it would be a good idea to line up just inside the door and there were a lot of people that expressed to me that they were intimidated about coming in to sign up to speak because the officers were making a presence inside the the building so just because there's a demonstration or people playing music out front doesn't mean people are trying to mess up your your meeting or anything like that they were trying to participate there was a little bit of a, a miscommunication there unfortunately a lot of that polarization when it happens between a community and a police department ends up creating a culture of distrust and that goes in both directions. Um, the uh, police officer who came to try to shut off the power, he's a state patrol officer, thought that that was an, an unfortunate side effect. He, he thought he was there to do something that was good. It also turned out he was lying about what he was there to do. Um, he told people that he was turning on some kind of a timer that would keep the power on for a longer period of time. That's not true. Um, he was there to try to shut the power off. Um, but the... Uh, the reason I came to talk to you guys today was um, there's still a culture of distrust between the police department and most of the community in Olympia. One of the things that I heard last week when I was picking up some documents from um, the police department here was that Sergeant Johnson mentioned that you're not currently enforcing the busking ordinance in Olympia, that the police department isn't currently enforcing the ordinance because there's a legal challenge to it up in King County to a law that they have up there that's a very similar wording. And because of that, there's, um, they don't want to make cases that are just going to get thrown out. That makes a lot of sense. You guys have an opportunity to overturn that law now before it gets made unconstitutional because obviously the First Amendment does, does not just apply to businesses in downtown Olympia. The First Amendment actually applies to everybody who is a person in the United States. You don't even have to be a citizen for the First Amendment to apply to you. All U.S. persons have First Amendment rights. So I came here to remind you guys of that. Um, um, uh, Council Member Strube and I still haven't had the sit down that she mentioned. It was your idea. I haven't gotten a call. So give me a call. Thanks. Thank you. Hi. Um, about two years ago, I came to Olympia to attend Evergreen and um, started playing with a group called the Artesian Mumbo Orchestra. Um, they're a group of older Olympians that are, um, you know, that play brass and wooden instruments, and, um, you know, they all live in Olympia. Um, some of them own their homes, some of them, um, you know, still pay mortgage. Um, most of them are over 50, and, uh, um, you know, they, they generally, you know, they're a bunch of really sweet people that, um, you know, they've never expressed any discomfort with downtown or or feel, feeling unwelcome downtown. And I've I've never felt that I was in any way impeded, um, that my movement downtown was in, impeded or that it was difficult for me to enter any business that I wanted to. Um, most of, you know, most people, um, most people I find are pretty friendly um, of all ages and all um, different social classes that I've come into contact here with here. And I feel that um, it's important to me that that environment that um, that is accepting and that is a classless environment um, remains part of what the Olympia experience is because um, it's not like that everywhere and it's really special. and. Um, I feel like, um, you know, I know there's a downtown business association that, um, you know, advocates for laws like the busking ordinance, and my feeling is that, you know, I have no problem, you know, if an older, even more affluent, you know, couple wants to go to the Olympia Theater and, you know, see a, see a show. Um, and I don't feel, you know, unwelcoming towards them. And I don't feel like, you know, I feel like, um, 
so I'm getting a little flustered here, but um, my point is just that, like, you know, I feel like it's more of an attitude of um, feeling like they don't want to see, you know, some people, some groups feeling like they don't want to see people of certain classes and doing certain activities downtown, but it's not just activities that are, you know, disruptive, it's, you know, it's really, it's really sort of a, you know, I think it's, I think it's a certain level of bigotry, and um, that's just how I feel about the whole thing, and uh, I like Olympia and how welcoming it is. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Charlie Bishop, 555 West Bay Drive, Olympia. Uh, <laughs> after all this tonight, I don't know what I really want to say, except I want all of you to take a good look at me. Uh, I've decided to get involved. In fact, I considered very seriously about running for mayor until I checked into all the ifs, ands, and buts, and I decided I can do more good on this side than that side. So I'm just here tonight. If you do good, I'm here to praise you. If I don't like something, I won't be praising you. But you will be seeing me and hearing from me. Whether it's good or bad, it's up to you. Thank you. Okay. As you can see, I have a lot of spirit, and I deserve to be listened to. I'm a man of equality. That means equal rights for me as for you. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I, uh, I got to tell you, I've been harassed by the cops numerous times, and it's felt very unfair. I did nothing, because I can do nothing. It's the cops say so, and that's it. On the other end of busking, there's too much harassment. There's too much harassment. Even in zones where we can busk, they still harassed us numerous times. There's been, there's been times where I said to them, well, can I explain myself? No. Well, you want to explain yourself? You want to get smart with me? And that's how they took it. Well, you know, I can write you a ticket. That's what they said. And I said to myself, well, here it goes again. Another legal issue that I gotta deal with. I don't deserve this. I'm a good kid of the community. It's really unfair. I wouldn't want to sit around and get harassed. Would you guys? I don't think so. We're just trying to make some money. These choices that we've made have landed us here. And some of us haven't even made choices that landed us here. Some of it is our parents not having patience. Things like that. Situations getting blown over. I, I just want to say that it's not cool. It's not cool at all. We deserve the right, each and every one of us, because you know what we are? Just like you guys, we're people of this community. Standing on the corner trying to make some money playing music, selling artwork, selling jewelry, that's all good. But to the point where we get harassed because of that by the cops. We're not supposed to be here. We're not supposed to be there. I got kicked out of the well. I don't know why. It's it ain't cool. It ain't cool at all. So uh, I just want to say, hopefully you guys can take this word into consideration. And you guys can feel me from the heart, because that's who I am. I'm just a big heart. I want equality for everyone. I just want harmony throughout the streets. Everyone to be joy. Everyone to experience love from one another to and extend them out. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hello.
I think it might be cheaper for the city. Uh, to stop wasting everybody's time. If you want, I want to be fascist. Uh, I hope there's not a boycott or something. I mean, a journal boycott. I'm glad one of the city councilors got a, a garden plot, and there's uh, 65 plots at the community garden. Where are the natives? Where are the salmon? I just rode uh, three days through the woods. Where are, they, where are the trees? There's a nuclear reactor going? These wars? You think this is it? Come on. You gotta lighten up on people. <laughs> so I understand that Stephen Hunt. Did I got that right? Um, so hi, I'm Sven. Um, I'm a local busker, musician, downtown. Um, and I seem to notice that um, there seems to be a really big push here in Olympia to gentrify the community and uh, make it really yuppy yuppity and uh, just push all the homeless people out, push all the people from you know, the counterculture out, and just bring in this wave of like, you know, Richie Bourgeois folk. And I mean, the thing that's beautiful about Olympia is that we are counterculture. I mean, we have a little flavor of everything. We have all different sides of the coin, you know? It's not just black, white, it's all the colors. We have everything here. It's diverse. And it's also a hub between Portland and Seattle, which are also really diverse communities. I mean, I'm sure you guys have heard this before. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a freaking hub. You know, we're the capital, we're a hub, and we have, like, this channel, this connection. And it's beautiful. And to ruin that would just be, it would be contrived. Mm -hmm. It really would. Hey. <laughs> Anna Stenshaus Curtis. Um, <clears throat> hi, my name is Anastasia. Anna. Um, yeah, I'm a violinist. Um, I play on 4th Street pretty regularly. I just like to start with a really brief story. Um, there's, I usually play out there, and there's this lady who I always see, and she, she comes up to me one of the last times. She's like, hey, she looks really sad. And I'm like, what's wrong? She's like, I have terminal cancer, and you probably won't see me again. But I just wanted you to know your music really lifts me up a lot, and I want this to be the last thing that I hear. And I played for her, and then she left, and I never saw her again. And so... Um, yeah, with that, I just wanted to remind you, like, the point of busking isn't really exactly just to make money. Even though a lot of the people who are busking are obviously homeless because of what the society has done to them, but it's really a way to spread love and awareness and light to people. Because people, I mean, if you look at the looks on your faces, you're just, you need to be woken up. That's the point of it, to wake people up and to make them aware of culture and, of, and people have been spending their whole lives like me, like working on understanding the beauty and complexity of music, but to make it so complicated for, for us to express that, it's a crime. It really is, you know? And so, and I, I mean, I'm not a drunk. I don't do drugs, you know? Yeah, I have a home. But, you know, that should not, uh, any of those things, they should not really determine whether or not we deserve to do what we do, you know? Like, and so, um, what should I say? Yeah, so, and I'm sure you guys have, I mean, a lot of different, what am I trying to say? Well, you guys, I know you guys appreciate music and art. I mean, you guys, you're human beings. That's what we do. And a lot of versions of music and, you know, art, like, started on the streets. And so if you, what you're doing is destroying that. It's destroying it. And if you keep pushing it and keep pushing it, you know, trying to follow your own weird agendas, you're going to destroy the very energy of art and music and, and what people's souls are made out of. So I'd just like you to, to think more about that. And I know some of the music out there is a little scary, makes you uncomfortable, you know, you don't want your kids to be listening to this, you know. But some of us out there really are musicians, really just want people to hear what we've been working so hard on. And a lot of kids are really inspired by this, you know, and a lot of people love it. So please, please just reconsider it a little bit. You know, reconsider all of the crazy like structures that you're putting on us. Yeah, thanks. Up next is Brittany. Is it 
Keiko? Hello, my name is Brittany, and I haven't been harassed yet, and I haven't been busking much, but like Anastasia said, it some people are really out there just to express their souls, and I wish everyone could just see each other as equals, and that goes for the buskers, too. I wish we could be a little, uh, eat both sides. Even though there shouldn't be sides, since we're all equals. <laughs> but I just wish no one would harass the other and just be love. And we love you. <laughs> uh, James Lynn. Olympia. You know, um, <laughs> okay, hold on, I might choke up. I have a tremendous fear of speaking in public. <laughs> okay, um, so yeah, growing up, playing at Lacey, you know, um, you know, you hear about these, <laughs> you hear about these bands, you know, um, <laughs> sorry. Okay, you hear about these bands, you know, Modest Mouse with Isaac, um, Isaac Brock, um, Nirvana, <laughs> with Kirk Cobain, you know, you have the other famous Washington, um, you know, singers, Jimi Hendrix, um, you know, there's other ones, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, um, you know, I see Olympia, always back then, as a um, <laughs> place of, you know, culture, like, you know, I was up in Seattle, you know, they have, you know, busking as well, you know, I, you know, and with um, Olympia, is, uh, you know, this place of, um, you know, culture and community, you know, that, you know, it's advertised as, you know, um, you know, so uh, I really wanted to play music <laughs> downtown. <laughs> um, so the first time I did it in, um, you know, a couple months ago in April, um, you know, I'm on the side of um, Bank of America, you know, um, this person, person comes over and says, you know, um, you know, thank you for playing your, you know, because I play violin, I'm, I'm a violinist, um, so, so this person's like, um, you know, thank you for playing this. Um, you know, um, it's just a really classical instrument, and you know, what you're doing is cool. You know, and, um, you know, I haven't, I haven't played for very long, and I just got back into it and played in high school, so, so after this guy, um, you know, I'm playing for a little bit, then, then, like, um, get intimidated by cops, you know, because, um, you know, looking for someone else, they, uh, threaten me with, you know, in, you know, jail and stuff, you know, um, give me all the, you know, ordinances, you know, six feet away from the, you know, business. Um, okay, but, um, <laughs> yeah, so, so how can this, you know, community that's, you know, all for culture and stuff have these laws against people expressing themselves? You know, especially with, you know, the cultural background that, you know, Olympia has. Um, so, yeah, I just, um, just here to, you know, say, um, you know, take a, you know, a lift up the, the busking laws, um, you know, let the people, you know, play whatever they want. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Last speaker we have time for within the first 30 minutes is Brittany Jones. Is Brittany here? Okay, my opinion on busking is I don't think that we should have stars on a map saying where we can have freedom of speech to say what we want to say in our, so in our songs. So I think that there shouldn't be any laws about busking. I think it's a freedom of speech again. So let's not put more, let's put more, but that. Just let us play our music, please, and stop harassing us. That's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Good evening. I'll be brief. It's late. I'm here tonight to talk to you about the First Amendment right to free speech. And that's free speech in the capital city of the state of Washington. The case law in the matter is emphatically clear that citizens have a right to engage in free speech in public space. And the most protected public spaces are the streets and parks. 
In that sense, I think you'd have to recognize that the streets and parks of the capital city of the state hold a special significance to citizens. The case law is, is similarly clear that busking is a protected form of free speech. So permitting processes that limit busking have been found to be unconstitutional. I believe that the, the ordinance that the city of Olympia enforces selectively limits busking to such a small zone that it, it, it wouldn't stand up to scrutiny. And I think that the council needs to assume and accept their responsibility for ordinance 5.88, I believe that's the correct ordinance for busking, that does in fact create citations for folks who are engaging in free speech in the parks and the streets of the capital city of the state. You can't deny and you can't evade that responsibility. I want to encourage you to read a case law of Berger versus the City of Seattle, which I brought tonight, and I'll leave with the city attorney, which uh, states some things quite clearly. And I'll, I'll, like I say, I'll leave it there. Um, it, it, it says quite clearly here, the protections afforded by First Amendment are nowhere stronger than in streets and, and parks. Nowhere stronger. You can't take the sidewalks of the streets of Olympia and say, these are business, pedest uh, business uh, passive walkways or something. They are not. They are, they are streets and parks. They are protected for free speech. It's critical. Uh, it goes fast. So I'm just going to let you know that we're gathering signatures uh, and asking the city to repeal the busking ordinance. Uh, you have this uh, power. It's not, it's not hard. You don't have to amend it. You just repeal it. It's 5.88. Take it off the books. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh um, I'm Maureen, I'm known as Maureen. I'm an artist in this community. And we have four generations of my family in Thurston County. Well, three, because my parents are dead now. Um, I have been working on the street, helping the children that are there because of abuse in their home. And, and um, I talk to them. I hear over and over again the abuses that they have suffered on the street, by police. I've watched them. I've sat and watched police chasing children on the streets. They have no place to go. There, there is funding cuts for CYS, carte blanche, and that's community youth services that are to help these children. And Capital Clubhouse is here for the mentally ill, and that, and that helps shuffle them. But the homeless kids have nowhere to go. And we've been trying to get them off the corner of a blighted building that was all the musicians were kicked out. Where are those musicians supposed to go? They don't even have a place to practice anymore, a building. It was closed down. And now homeless children are using it as a urinal because there's no, no toilets, public toilets available for them in the downtown area. You've, um, the city went in. You guys have never done anything for the water, the artesian well, but now you put a grade in it. Now the animals don't have a, a source of water because they have to have standing water. You've ruined the water hole for the community. It should be a fountain, and it should be appreciated. But no, we're getting, everything's getting swept aside. So many artesian wells have been capped downtown here. There should be water available for everyone. I was thirsty out there walking on the streets because there is no public fountains. You've cut our public fountains off. And... Um, the 
the last thing is the permits between the shops and the business. That's that's uh, it looks like a waste of time. There's from the beginning of time when a musician would stand there and play music for for busking, trying to get some money so that they can go in the shops and eat and drink. It's they've always had agreements, and I would just like to say that repeal all that and stop it. Get a moratorium.